Hi. You boys live around here? Yeah, I'm David Witherspoon. I live around the corner. Hi, honey. <laughs> Kaplan's your name. Dancing's my game. Hit me, will you? Okay. If some criminal lived in your neighborhood, don't you think you'd know it by now? I mean, she's too pretty to get involved in anything like that. You want to tell me what's going on here? I woke up. I'm not going to live forever. I don't want. I want to enjoy the rest of my life. Okay? Is that a crime? Special packs, you know, fix for the couple one. Well, if your room wasn't so messy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look, never mind. Just, just you're just a slob, Dave. Now find the tapes. You know, you're gonna grow up to be just like your dad. What's that supposed to mean? What if you're more than the one who stands there and tells you how to do it? <sighs> just find the tapes. Come on, hurry. You don't even look like him. <sighs> and when he gets upset, he puts his hands on his hips. Then he rolls his eyes. Yes. Then he starts grabbing things. Do you want to eat these? This is all Alan Cook rocking this outland. I've got a handful of dedications here. Patty loves Wayne. Joe loves Ellen. And Bob loves Janet. On the other hand, Marilyn is thrilled she broke up with Jim. She wishes he'd move out of state. She's glad they suspended his driver's license. And she hopes his braces don't work. Oh, that's low. Chip, your pals David and JR are really sorry you've got the mumps. I guess it kind of makes band practice hard. What's happening? No, this is really weird. You gotta make it. Wait, now that's not Paul Allen Cook. Sounds juicy. Chopped, we're talking fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 Yeah, don't suffer too much. He can afford the hit. Let's just keep our eyes open for other opportunities, okay? So what do you think, Chris? A bank heist? A drug deal? A bad radio show. Come on, Chris, open your eyes. This is rad stuff. Something's going down. JR, where did you learn to talk like that? From his dad. It'd stick my life on it. Let's just leave my dad out of this, okay? Somebody's running around doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I think we better call the police. Oh, yeah, right. Um, hi, we were listening to the Paul Allen Cook show, and all of a sudden we heard voices. Real nice, JR. She's right. They laugh at us. Besides, if Chris doesn't buy it, nobody's going to buy it. Why is that? She'll believe anything. She's the biggest sucker in the world. David, get out of here. Right. Get, take this and get out. Now. Yes. Go. And you too. Go. Hope you made it good and strong this morning. I'm having trouble waking up. Did you and Gladys do too much celebrating last night? No, no, nothing special. You know, we, it was very sedate. We just sat in front of the TV set and tried to find a half-hour show with, uh, with a laugh track. Are you supposed to do something romantic on your anniversary? Well, knowing that it was the big 4-0 took some of the sparkle away. Last night was your 40th anniversary. Please, don't rub it in. Do you realize that you've been married four times as long as I've been alive? Molly, that's a terrible thing to say. What should you get for making me learn my times tables? No, that's okay. The kid's right. I'm just about as old as you can get. Oh, nonsense. Why is it every time I get ready to be honest and say how old I am, somebody says you're not old? You're old. I take that back. It's got a bad ring. Tell me I'm not old. <laughs> Hey, 
since we finally rented that place out, the sign's gone. Yeah. Hey, I wonder if there's anyone in there our age. You know, maybe like a couple twin girls. <laughs> By chance. Oh. Hello there. I'm your new neighbor, Kate Fremont. Hi. You boys live around here? Yeah, I'm David Witherspoon. I live around the corner. Hi. This is my friend, JR. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Excuse me a second. Ooh. Ooh. You know what, Dave? This is exactly what I want when I grow up. A wife like that, a car just like that, and a house like this. What's wrong? Why aren't you saying anything? I think any of the girls in school are going to look like that. No such luck. At least let me see it. You can see it when I open it. Let me help you. I can do it myself. 101 magic tricks. You just want to get your hands on those x-ray glasses, and you know it. You said I could have them. Look, here's the magic rope and the... Cards and the spring handkerchief, the sorcerer's the wand. X-ray glasses. Well, can you see my bones? I can't even see your face. Hi, mom. Hi, handsome. Uh, bye, mom. Hey, big guy, how are you? Morning, Gus. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Mr. Kaplan. <laughs> Hi, honey. Kaplan's the name. Dance thing's my game, kid. Hit me. Hit me I with the chair. I wouldn't turn the volume up that loud. You go out of school, you'll be late. Wait, Mom, would you take a picture of him for me? Jared's never going to believe me. <laughs> See you, man, later. Hey, big guy. Turn it off. You want me to pull a plug on this combo AM-FM set here? What's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? We'll look at you. The get-up, the, the, the radio, what's... Oh, well, this is the new me. I, I have younged a few years. As opposed to aged a few years. Young a few years. That's, a, that's a, a word I coined. You think these clothes, this radio, that kind of thing makes you younger? You're full of prunes. Oh, this coffee smells delicious. See that? See that? My smell buds have youngered. I'm worrying about you, my friend. You don't know how to emphasize with me. You're too old. You're too set in your ways. You mean emphasize? Whatever, whatever. I'll give you an example. I'm going to lay something on you. It's true. I just want to see what kind of a reaction I'm going to get from you. This weekend, I'm going to go skydiving. <laughs> See that? That's a negative reaction. Yeah, you That's see. Skydiving. Hang on, big guy. <laughs> Listen, he's guaranteed to freak you out. Okay, it's kind of rewind. She thinks he's a hitman. got your job and I got mine. Let's just leave it at that. Come anywhere near Fairview Street and it's over. You got that? Dave, that's not the tape. Fairview Street is just around the corner. I'm almost home. I don't have anything else to say anyway. A car phone. <laughs> Does anybody want to see my disappearing handkerchief? Where'd it go? No wonder we were picking up the signal. They were so close. What's the big deal? It was just a conversation. It was not just a conversation. Okay, so it was an argument. No one believes us, even when they hear it. If some criminal lived in your neighborhood, don't you think you'd know it by now? 
No, it just... I mean, not if they just... moved in. No, that's impossible. Well, why? I mean, she's too pretty to get involved in anything like that. I don't know what you guys are talking about, and I don't care. I gotta head over to Chips. What has he got that we don't have? The mumps. He likes it when I take his temperature. like the new wheels. What was wrong with the old wheels? Nothing. Joe, this is a $25,000 car. Nothing was wrong with the old wheels. Where are they? You didn't trade that old classic in. Oh, I didn't trade it in. What do you think, I'm stupid? Come on, hop in. Let's go for a spin. Uh, I can't. I got a shop full of customers. Gus, Gus, come on, please. I want to share this with somebody. How do you like her? It's not a herd, Joe. It's a car. This bothers you, doesn't it? What? Uh, I figured it would. I just think some of the things you're doing here are a little bit crazy. <laughs> Why would you want to say a thing like that? I'm not well, look at you. What? You're acting like a screwy kid. Oh, you've been talking to Gladys. No. I'm just trying to give myself a little positive reinforcement in my old age, that's all. Now, that I understand. But Joe, my friend, take it easy. You think I'm going overboard? <laughs> Come on. Skydiving? I'm not going skydiving. I'm going parachute jumping. There's a difference. There's no free fall, that's all. Skydiving, parachute jumping? Come on. Yes, I do. I think that's going overboard. That's a great thing to hear from a guy's best friend on a beautiful day with the top down, a brand new car. Thanks a lot. All right, what are we gonna say? We're gonna arrest him, then we'll try him, then we'll hang him. Come on, Dave, be serious, all right? This whole thing is making me really nervous. You're right, we should forget the trial. All right, you go first. Maybe we should think about this. Maybe we should think about not doing this. I think we need another plan. Hi, guys. Uh, David, isn't it? And JR. Yeah, yeah, right. <clears throat> she remembers me. She remembers us, bud. Did you want to come and have a soda? Uh, oh, thanks anyway. Well, we'd love to. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> Make yourselves comfortable. Thanks. Well, lucky I saw you boys walking. Sticky day like today, a person could use a little company. Yeah, Jay and I were just talking about how sticky it is outside. Weren't we, Jer? Yeah, yeah, uh, just right out, right out front. Uh, we just noticed it. Right. How long have you lived here? About two years. Oh, I live right on the other side of Castle Road. I like it here. Everybody's friendly enough. <sighs> Except the old guy with the security gate. Well, Mr. Baxter, he moved here about a year ago. He's harmless. So where's your husband? Um, Brian. Oh, keep strange hours. Oh, he'll wander in about midnight or so. What do you want to drink? Anything will be fine. Okay. Wait, what are you doing? Checking the place out. She's right in the other room. Just get back, okay? JR! JR! I can always tell when there's something wrong. You come out here. Does it help? 
Well, grab a paintbrush and find out. I heard about Mr. Kaplan's new car. Yeah. Gladys called. Well, he says he can afford it. She says he can't. Has Mr. Kaplan ever gone through anything like this before? Honey, Joe Kaplan can make a fool out of himself better than anybody I ever knew. But this time he's got me baffled. So glad it's not to wait up for him tonight. Mm -hmm. She's thinking about leaving him. your bedtime, isn't it, boy? Yes, sir, Mr. Baxter. Planning on making a little mischief, were you, in my front yard? No. Name's Witherspoon, isn't it? Yes, sir. I don't want to catch you back here at high noon, much less midnight. You got that? Yeah. Now get out of here. Let's get it over with. What? The lecture you dragged me out of bed for. Let's just keep walking, OK? I don't know about that. I don't think I really want to walk. You know what? What? Look at you. Making a jackass out of yourself. I'm making a jackass out of myself? You think this is bad? Wait a few days. I'm going to have a pink heart, and I'm going to tattoo it right up here, and I'm going to wear safety pins on my nose. Why don't you? I will. You're being very sarcastic, my friend, and I don't like it. So just stop it, okay? 
You don't like it? No. Oh, that's too bad. There's a lot of things that you don't like that you're going to have to get used to. Oh, really? Yeah. Where were you last night, Joe? I'll tell you where I wasn't. I wasn't locked up in a dingy little, tiny little house. That's where I wasn't. Do you want to tell me what's going on here? Yeah, I woke up. That's what's going on. I'm not going to live forever. I don't want, I want to enjoy the rest of my life, OK? Is that a crime? Come on. Let's forget about this and go pitch horseshoes, OK? I wouldn't do that to you. I don't want to pitch horseshoes with you. I will embarrass you. I'm a silly old man. Tell you tell me different, you're my best friend. Now, come on, let's go pick shoes. No, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want a lot of friends that are going to tell me how to live my life, what to do. I don't want Gladys to do that. I don't want you to do that. Nobody, OK? Adios. I'm going to swallow any of this. You're crazy. We're just telling you what we saw. Yeah, maybe in some movie. You see, JR would be stupid for us to go to the cops. We can't even get our friends to believe us. That's because your friends know you too well. Ow! Ow! Do you want me to do that for you? No. You want you to take his temperature. Don't you ever tell Chip I said that. Hey, you want to see that room? You'd go back there? Sure, why not? You're nuts. They, they have guns. You two don't give up. Come on. I'll prove it to you. Let her care. You lucked out. They're not home. Wait a minute. This is the room, though. No, it's right here. Right behind these curtains. How convenient. They're closed. Where is the window around back? What are you going to do? Break in? Maybe. Open. Hello? Is anybody home? Somebody left in a hurry. I get it. This house belongs to that friend of your grandpa's, Mr. Kaplan. He helped you set this whole thing up. Come on. That's the door. Nice try, David, but I'm not biting. You're home. Good. I've never met Mrs. Kaplan. Hey, what's this doing open? Don't ask me. Locked. Come on. Oh, my you were the last one out of the house. How much energy does it take to shut the stupid door? Lay off. You're starting to sound like a real husband. Well, maybe it's because I'm sick of being here. I'm sick of that old man. I'm sick of the L&W, and I'm sick of looking over my shoulder all the time. That makes two of us. Hey. OK. Let's go grab a flick. We can forget about this cesspool for a couple hours. You got a deal. A good thriller. Something with a lot of blood in it. Yeah. There's an L&W bakery. 
No, those guys are not into cupcakes. Yeah, L&W Meat Market. I knew it! Butchers! I told you that guy was a hitman. I hope my mom doesn't shop there. L&W Salvage Yard. They're not junk dealers either. Hmm. Wait a minute. $60,000. If those guys are really butchers, I don't want to know about it. Wait a minute. The meat's not the only thing that gets chopped. Cars do, too. The salvage yard. Yeah. They're stealing cars and chopping them up for parts. Wait, wait, wait. How, how'd you know that? How do you think? It's not on television. Hello. Oh, hi, Gladys. Gladys, you've got to slow down. I can't understand the word. Again? What, just now? Gus, Mr. Kaplan is going to the airport. He's going skydiving. Uh, Gladys, take a deep breath. Try to collect yourself. Yeah. Don't you want to do something about this? As soon as I finish this article. Oh, Gladys, don't cry. No, Gus does want to help. Of course he wants to help. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is important. How can you sit there reading your newspaper? And how can you sit there eating cereal? I'm hungry. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Um, look, why don't you uh, run and get some Kleenex, and, and uh, I'll hold on. No, I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay. Oh, Gus, come on. She's hysterical. You've got to do something now. All right, I'll be back in a little while. You know, this reporter at your paper is nuts. He says we need a new freeway through here. Where have you been? Where's JR? Doing chores. He said he'd meet us here later. What are we supposed to be doing, anyway? Surveillance. What kind of surveillance? I don't know. Looking for suspicious activity. David, maybe it's time to call the police. They're really going to listen to a couple of kids. Well, what are we supposed to do if we see suspicious activity? Go round up the bad guys? No. Then we call the cops. I thought you said they wouldn't listen to us. We've already seen suspicious activity. If they don't believe us now, why would they believe us if we see more suspicious activity? You know, women have a way of twisting things around. Boys don't make any sense. Well, I'm glad we know how you feel about each other. What about Chip? Does he make any sense? No. At least he doesn't try to. Oh, I see. You like stupid guys and stay that way. Out of there? Yeah, I can get out. Yeah. That was some trip. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You all right to drive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No problem. Got some oxygen inside if you need it. No. I'll be fine. Okay. Really? Yeah. All right. Sorry. Okay, sorry. You okay, pal? Yeah, where you parked? I'm over here. 
Well, you want to talk about this? Gus, why must we talk about everything? Why is that necessary? It's not. All right, then. I'd like to not talk about it, OK? OK. Did Gladys put you up to this? No, but I think you should call her. Well, I got news for you. I don't have any quarters. I didn't anticipate this. I got quarters. So you call her. Uh. I'm not going to call her. I can't talk to her now about what just happened. Gus, I froze up there. I, I chickened out. I just I couldn't go through with it. Good. I wouldn't even jump in one of them things, let alone jump out of it, not in a million years. No, but you don't understand. See, it's a big thing with me and Gladys. Uh, when I first met her, I told her a lie. I told her I was going to join the Airborne and become a paratrooper. And of course, I went into the Navy, so, you know. You knew uh, I was going to chicken out like this, didn't you? No. Sure you did. That's why you hung around here. No, well, that's not why. But I was hoping. Now, where are you parked? Right here. Right where? Right here. My car is gone. My car was right here. Somebody stole my car. Car is Mr. Kaplan's. That old guy drives a car like that? Pretty strange. Totally. That was the same kind of interior, too. It couldn't be his, though. Why not? I mean, he's been driving around the neighborhood. They could have seen it. So they just took it? Pretty neat guys, huh? Stay here.
never going to be able to face Gladys again. That's all. You got insurance, don't you? Yeah, sure, but... Okay, then, if the police don't find it, it ain't the end of the world. Gus, there's a lot more to it than that. If the police don't find what? Well, uh, somebody stole my car, honey. The whole thing? Yeah, no. Okay, <laughs> you little kittens, load up your stuff and go on upstairs and play. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Off you go. You know what I am, Gus? I'm a frightened, useless old man. Only if you think so. Now, nah, come on. You don't understand. I mean, you, you just don't know what's going on. You want a cup of coffee? Yeah, that'll be good. <sighs> See, Gus, you know, uh, <clears throat> Gladys and me, uh, 40 years, 40 good years of marriage, 40 good years of marriage, and, you know, what a woman. E -e especially, you know, she put up with me all those years, and as you well know, I am not... I am not an easy person to live with. I'm not a good husband. I'm just a nothing husband. I am, uh... I am afraid of my own shadow. I, I, all I wanted to do, you know, was just... Just feel vital again. See her smile. Is that a big deal to ask? No. Drink this coffee. Thank you, Gus. <laughs> Got any bright ideas? Believe me, I tell you. Well, here's something to think about. I ain't going back to prison, no matter what it takes. If you let us go, we won't tell anybody. We promise. Pipe down, you've been enough trouble. Well, what's it gonna be, Jimmy? Go lock up. Mm. Oh. I don't want anybody coming in unannounced. Is David here? I haven't seen him since this morning. I thought he was supposed to meet you somewhere. Yeah, he was. What are you guys doing? I'm helping Molly take her bicycle apart. That way no one will want it. Mr. Kaplan got his whole car stolen. Oh, man, I'll take anybody's. Who will? Nothing. Never mind. Salvage yard. What salvage yard? Is your grandpa here? Yeah, but I wouldn't go in there. Your brother has such strange friends. Yeah, but some of them are pretty cute. Ha. Huh. David's in trouble. Don't you ever knock? The new neighbors. They're car thieves. I was supposed to meet David and Alex at the LNW salvage yard. I heard about Mr. Kaplan's car. They may hold have done on, that, too. On. Are you saying that people down the street are stealing cars? It's possible. Well, look, either they are or they aren't. Now, which is it? Well, they might be. And you say David's in some kind of trouble? Well, maybe he's okay. That's enough maybes, young fella. Now, I want some yeses and some noes. Where you going? I'm going to say hello to my new neighbors. Now, you folks stay where you are. Now, let me get this straight. David's in trouble. Where is he? Down the street? No, he's at the LNW Salvage Yard. LNW Salvage Yard. Yeah, I know where that is. I got a muffler there once. I'm home. Hi, Jesse. Mr. Kaplan. Jesse, it's an emergency. I need the keys to your car, please. There they are. What? But why does he want the keys to my car? I think you better call the police. No, he won't steal the car. I'll do it. What? Oh. Does it have to be so tight? Yeah. It'd be a real shame if it came undone. Please, don't hurt us. Yeah. They won't. 
Because we're not the only people who know about this place. Six and there's a padlock. What a stupid way to do business. Jesse. I hope it's not your turn in the carpool today. Go find out what happened. I could have sworn you were open today. <laughs> what do you want? Ah, I, uh, I'm looking for a red convertible and two kids. You have something like that in stock? Yeah, you do, don't you? I can see that. OK, I'll take them. Now stay right there. Stay right, right here? Yes. You clubbed me to death with that. You're going to be a murderer. Right now, you're just a car thief. I'm sorry, you know, us old guys can be very scary. You never know, we could be terminal. This is the way in. Mr. Kaplan! Oh, it's you. I, I know you, you live down the street. How do you get in here? He wouldn't stop. Time up. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I just came here for the kids. That's all. No big deal. You don't understand. You're in over your head. Oh, I'm in over my head? You hear those sirens? Those sirens are on your side. I'm in over Hold my up. head. If not... Freeze! Mr. Campbell, they have, they have guns and have done the street. He said freeze. Now drop it. Please. You're under arrest, Mr. Baxter. Hey, who are you? Hey! Neighbor. Mr. Kaplan, he's a friend and he just saved our lives. Kids okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. We, we thought you were the bad guys. We didn't know you were the police. All right, buddy, let's go. You've got the right to remain silent. Well, David, right how are you, kid? You can't afford the call Mr. Kaplan. What? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh. Should've seen those guys tremble when I walked in that garage. I wish I'd have been there, pal. <laughs> Are you ready for the famous disappearing dog trick? You have our undivided attention. Assistant? Here, I'll hold Arthur. Yeah, you put the box on her. Okay. <laughs> Arthur, stay. I think she's kind of scared. Uh, well, she I think wouldn't. so. <laughs> now, the lights, please. Uh, yes, so oh, great one. <laughs> oh, great one. <laughs> so anyway, this guy Baxter, I thought he was going to drop to his knees, throw his arms around my legs, and beg, beg for mercy. That's how intimidating my presence was. Well, you're going to be tough to live with now, ain't you, Oh, pal? you better believe it, see? Uh, yeah. You're going to watch this story grow and flourish and blossom with each telling. Ta-da! Hey! <laughs> and no oh. false bottoms on the box, either. You can even check. Where is he? They uh, turned him into a little wet spot on the floor there. Arthur, I'm going to get you! <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah, it's good to see you smile again, my friend. Well, it's hard not to smile around your grandchildren, Gus. I owe you, you know. You owe me? What are you talking about? 
Well, you risk your life, you know. Ah, I didn't risk my life. Who told you I risked my life? Never mind. I... I owe you. You know, I was maybe 40 years old. Uh -huh. And I, uh, I needed to see my folks. And I saw my mother and dad on their 50th anniversary. And uh, it was early in the morning. I was standing in the doorway, and they didn't have any idea I was around. And my mother was talking about her fears of growing old and her hating it. My dad was kind of a ham. And he was always quoting somebody. And I saw him, I saw him take my mother's hand and what he said was, come my friend, grow old with me. The best is yet to come. Gus, Gus, Gus. Now, nah, boy. King me. Yeah. <laughs> A musical odyssey. First, stick around for some toe-tapping country music on Country Crossroads. Then, it's the best in Southern gospel music on Southern Stage, coming up on Odyssey.